Okay, today what we're going to be talking about is uh, a 3D printing of the main assembly here. This is made up of the desktop piece, which you may or may not want. It's made up the main console piece here. Then there's the stems that hold up the lamps. And then the top pieces that the uh, lamp pieces actually sit onto. Now I chose to hold this one together with screws. There's no reason that you couldn't simply glue the whole thing together. Um, I'm going to take, well let's see, let's start with the bottom. You can see on the bottom I chose to hold this piece onto here with six screws. That's all gets 3D printing. Again, you could glue it. I also chose to print this large piece. See this seam here, here and right here? as two pieces because I printed everything on this small uh, A1 mini printer and there's some other reasons too but basically by cutting it here and printing that piece vertically and then this piece vertically side by side at the same time you get a smooth finish now normally on an FDM printer when it's trying to do a curve it'll stair step this it'll be very rough because it comes up, it has to do a layer, then it stair steps and stair steps. But if you print it vertically, the head just goes around the curve and you don't have that problem. And uh, I did enable some supports since this part right in the cut is where it's on the bed. So I needed some support here and here. Really the only places that I needed any form of support. I could have pre-taken these screws out, I guess. I didn't think about it. So just give me a moment here. I don't have a screw gun in here or I would do this much quicker. Um, the part right above it, the main console piece, I chose to print it split as well uh, for a couple of reasons. One, to make it fit on the uh, A1 Mini, but uh, two, for the same reasons I just told you about. Because there are curves involved and if you print it vertically you won't end up with any of the artifacts you have to clean up, none of the stair stepping. It'll all be uh, it'll all be ready to go. I haven't done any sanding even on this one. Didn't do any sanding or clean up or anything. Just uh, hit it with some primer and then painted them. The uh, brass looking rivets thing, uh, those are actually um, tacks that are used in upholstery but you could use thumbtacks from the dollar store too if you were trying to do it on the low budget. The holes that center them in place will be printed in the part and I just use the uh, E6000 which used to be sold under the name Goop to uh, hold them in place. Okay, I'm on my last screw here so just bear with me. And there. Use those. So now this is off. So now you can see the, the seam where I glued the two together and how it would have screwed on there. You, If you're going to use this as a desktop display you're probably going to want to print this part. And it's ha nice having this part separate because then if you don't have black filament, which I didn't have enough and I didn't want to buy a roll of it just for this, then you can just spray paint this piece black to match what it's supposed to look like. So as I was just saying this main console piece, so you can see there's a thin seam line there that a person could easily fill and sand if they wanted. But both those pieces were printed, seam line down on, on the bed, and then this piece the same way, side by side. And, the, and as I was saying, the main advantage to that is, if you were to print this, let's say these parts weren't on there, and put that part on the build plate, where well, you're going to have to have supports then for here, and supports for here. If you were to print it flat this way, you're going to have to fill this all in with supports and support this upper edge. But if you print it vertically like this, you don't need any supports. And these rounds will be clean and won't be stair-stepped. Now the most supports you could turn on if you wanted, and I went to a tree mode instead of full supports, it makes like little branches. I supported just the upper parts of these holes, but it wasn't really necessary because you can go back in with a Dremel or something and, and clean that out really quickly and really easily. 
Now what I'm doing now is I'm removing the two screws from the uh, center lamp part here. And it'll become clear why I'm doing that in just a second. They're much longer screws. I think they're like a an inch and a half long. I think an inch and a quarter probably would have been fine. I'm using number all these screws that I've used to this whole thing are uh, 632 here in America. And you can convert that to whatever you want in the rest of the world. Probably something close to four millimeter or something. Okay. And let's see if I can push that part out. Dang, I didn't glue it either. There we go. So, without these on there, this is what the top surface is going to look like. So then the next part, so you could paint this whole thing without these on there in your gold color or brass or whatever you want. And then go back in and do your uh, hunter green infill in, in those two places all the way around like this. So the next part's going to be the support tube and it's nice this piece is going to print on the print bed like that so no supports required for any part of it and that way you can sit and paint this whole thing red in this case I was using banner red which is a color and um, it'll make you know you don't have to mask anything off that way the, the piece will be painted and then that hole will fit right in if you line that up like that and if you get it turned right to where the screw holes in both halves kind of match up you're good to go so the next part is this piece that the dome sits on you've got the dome that sits on this inner one then you've got the metal cage or I should just say the cage for around the lamp sits on this outer one and again the screws are going to go through well I print this part flat on the print bed this way which means I do need supports for this inner part but it's real easy to uh, take a flat blade screwdriver and clean those supports out when you're done and then that way you can spray paint this whole piece the same gold color that you use for the rest of it again you wouldn't have to mask anything off now you could just glue all these parts together. You don't have to screw them together. Like I say, I chose to screw them together because I didn't know how many times I might be taking uh, things apart and putting them back together until I got it right or to shoot the video. And like I say, I'm using some long 632s to go down and bite between the two. And I guess there isn't any reason for me really to screw all these all the way in, but I've started now. We'll keep going. Again, a screw gun would probably make this a lot quicker. Or you could just use some shorter screws. I was using what I had laying around. It looks like uh, some uh, inch and a quarters would have probably been just fine instead of these long suckers. Now you could resin print these parts if you wanted. The uh, only w reason I wouldn't, it's its not the best choice. For this, this particular type of part, FDM is going to be better because you can control the infill. On this part and this part, uh, resin would be fine. But on this part, you wouldn't want to print this in solid resin. It'd be really expensive and really heavy. And you wouldn't want to hollow it and print it, which is what most resin printers will give you the choice of hollowing it with a wall because eventually it might work. I've found that true with large mechanically uh, oriented parts, things like this, flat pieces. They don't do well over the long term whereas um, because they're completely hollow. So if they get warm or collapse or anything like that. Whereas these, you set the amount of infill. In this case I've been printing it I think it's uh, like 15% or something. So even though they're light and they are mostly air, there's support everywhere in there and they're not going to sag and uh, get all wonky on you. So then you would take your, uh, your bottom piece, just the opposite of when we started this video, start one screw to line that up. 
and I won't make you watch putting all of these in because I think you get the idea. I'll put two in and we'll call it good because it'll stay together then by doing kitty corners like so. So there you have it. Those are the uh, one, two, three, four different parts. Of course all together you have four, six, eight by the time you've printed everything and if you want to count this as two since I split it then you're up to ten. So depending on how you want to count the parts but um, it's a lot quicker to print these on an FDM cut and you get a better finish on the parts.